Hello and welcome to this review of Avengers Endgame. Also Infinity War. Um, there's going to be a talk through all of the... I say all. A lot of the films in the MCU before uh, Infinity War and Endgame and in between. But if you want to skip that, just head to the timestamp that will be somewhere on screen around now. Okay? Okay. So... Starting in 2008, we had Iron Man, uh, which was hugely successful, uh, and we also had The Incredible Hulk, slightly less successful, um, and that's why Iron Man 2 followed up pretty quickly. These introduced us to, well, Iron Man and The Incredible Hulk, um, but also brought in Rhodey and all the a bunch of other background characters, which also led to the idea that potentially they could do the big thing rather than just a smaller thing, which is why they ended up bringing out things like Thor and Captain America, which led, of course, to the Avengers. The Avengers, very good, uh, after Thor had talked about Loki, and then Loki was the big bad of Avengers with the Tesseract and their scepter, it went... Sorry, my door just opened. Um, yeah, Tesseract and the Scepter, it sort of introduced the Infinity Stones a little bit. Um, and furthermore, it led on to the following part, with uh, the whole Hulk of, I'm always angry, and it introduced all of the other <laughs> Avengers. So it had... Uh, Clint and Natasha as well, um, and S.H.I.E.L.D., which enabled the whole Hydra thing for Captain America 2, not that I remember that film very much, I didn't really like much of Phase 2, and unlike most people, I really enjoyed Thor The Dark World, um, but it was more Lokiing around, and that followed through into, well, you know, the next thing, um, which Phase 3 happened. Phase 3, I much preferred to Phase 2. Even Age of Ultron, I didn't really like. But that... that uh, I like Guardians of the Galaxy, though. Guardians of the Galaxy, very good. It was sort of a refreshing reboot sort of deal to the series, which was much needed at the time. Um, however, it kept going and going and going until Age of Ultron... Barely remember that film. Introduced Vision. Don't like Vision. Uh, introduced Wanda, Scarlet Witch, and her brother, Pietro, I think. And downplayed them both so much. Scarlet Witch is, in my humble opinion, the most powerful mutant in the Marvel world that I'm aware of. Um, and she does nothing throughout the entire series. Literally nothing. So... Uh, they end up uh, having more sequels in uh, Thor Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, uh, Civil War. By this point, Iron Man 3 also happened, but we also get Ant-Man and Doctor Strange. Don't really remember much about Ant-Man. I was very tired when I watched it. Doctor Strange I've watched a couple times and is great, and... Leads to some plot holes, but that's fine. Um, and yeah, then we come to Infinity War. Thank you for watching the last four minutes or so, if you did. If you skipped, then hello and welcome to the review part. So, Infinity War. Great film. Um, I love the introduction. Uh, it brought together Thor Ragnarok and Guardians Volume 2 and smushed them together with Thanos, and it was great. Yes, there's a slight issue with, as far as I can understand it, the Hulk is meant to get stronger the angrier the Hulk gets, and the Hulk is also meant to get... I'm going to put something in front of that door. And the Hulk is meant to get more angry the more hurt the Hulk is, so surely the Hulk would have just got more and more powerful whilst Thanos was beating him up and then beat Thanos, but that wouldn't have made for a very interesting film, now, would it? Um, similarly, couldn't Heimdall have used 
you know, the Bifrost to send Thanos into the center of a sun, but whatever, I guess that's not that important, and I suppose it wouldn't have done that much, considering what happens later on in the film, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So, Loki dies. There's no proof he's dead, at all. Um, as do half of the Asgardians, which is a big pain, but whatever, it's fine. Though I do have an issue with Thanos' logic, because he's like all, yeah, I need a half population, pretty sure that the population had already been over halved, considering that their planet got exploded by Surtur. But whatever, that's fine. Um, we have um, the Guardians find Thor, who's all like, we need to go to Nidavellir because I need a new hammer, not a spoon. And a uh, hilarious scene. Uh, that's great. And then they go, meanwhile, the rest of the Guardians are like, well, I guess we'll go and stop Thanos from getting the rest of the Infinity Stones, because then he'll become indestructible, which leads to this awful moment. Yeah, it's pretty grim. Um, but that's fine. Uh, going forward, we still have more stuff happen. It's great. Um... Thor's whole holding open the Neutron Star. Brilliant. Though, I learned something from my friend who does physics at university about strange particles. Nothing to do with Doctor Strange. Look them up if you're interested. Um, then, we have the whole Wakandan assault. And yes, I'm skipping over the Vision Wanda stuff. I don't like it. Um... Yeah, so we have the Assault of Wakanda, which is an epic fight, and my favourite scene in cinema, well, one of them, is Thor's arrival. It's it's great. It's, it was my favourite scene that I've seen in the cinema for a long time anyway. Maybe not my favourite in all of cinema, but presently, it's the first one that comes to my mind. <laughs> um, then we have Thanos versus the... Uh, secondary team on Titan. An excellent fight, though more plot holes. One, why did Doctor Strange only look through 14,605 possible futures? Doesn't make much sense to me. Two, why didn't he use the Time Stone to rewind time and win? Three, why didn't they just stab Thanos in the face when they were trying to pull the glove off, because Mantis had put him to sleep, well, kind of sleep, enough sleep that he didn't react at all when they were trying to take the glove off, or to Quill being all like, up in his face, <laughs> no, didn't react at all to that, so just get, like, Mr. Nanobot Iron Man over there, make a giant spike with a jet at the back out of everything, and just <laughs> straight through him. Oh, I know why. I wouldn't have made for a very interesting film. It would have felt kind of anticlimactic. Um, so, they continue on with their illogical but highly entertaining shenanigans and into Endgame. Endgame. <laughs> uh, well, in between Endgame, there were two more films released, Ant-Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel. I haven't seen either of them. But they both happened beforehand, so it's fine. Um, so... Endgame's a long film. A bit too long, in my opinion. They could have cut stuff out. For example, my friend pointed this out after we saw it. The whole first section where they kill Thanos, that was unnecessary, because they're doing the whole thing with Nebula syncing up with other Nebula and projecting the past. But they could have done that whole thing way more succinctly in flashbacks. We would have got the gist. would be great. The only real important thing there is, like, the whole, yeah, Captain Marvel is with them now, but, you know, that works anyway. In the later scene, five years later, after Cap's whole, completely pointless, yeah, I'm talking to people about moving on, but I can't move on, oh no, thing, um, we have the scene where there's, like, Rocket and Cap, and, no, yeah, Rocket and different Cap, Captain Marvel, um, and the other people blue in space talking to Black Widow. So that happens. And, uh, 
yeah, we, we get the introduction there to show, yeah, she's working with them. Very useful. Um, then the Ant-Man bit makes sense, but they had to rely on time travel, something that, oh yeah, the Time Stone could have done. If he can beat Dormammu with Time Stone, he could beat Thanos. Anyway, um, yeah, they uh, just glaze past that plot hole and say, you know what? We can use science rather than magic to time travel, and it'll be fine. And they do it, and it's a brilliant set of scenes. I love them, and yes, that is the ass of America. However, um, I do have a slight question as to Loki with the Tesseract. Just whew, that timeline, did Cap somehow manage to go and put that right at the end? I don't know, but... It's a brilliant scene, and I love it much. Um, furthermore, they have their battle at the end. Again, slight thing, once Bruce, Bruce Hulk, Dr. Hulk, Hulk Banner, whatever his name is, does a click, that means everyone's back. And at that moment, Doctor Strange, who has seen the future, could, rather than let the whole bombing of UEA Lake, I mean, um, the Avengers headquarters happen, could have just sling ring, popped out, like, yo, bombing's gonna happen, sling ring there and there, because he's obviously got plenty for all the shenanigans he pulls at the end, and just makes it so, yeah, they fire the missiles, and then they go back and hit the ship, and then, oh no, they're all dead. But again, interesting film, rather than logical decisions. Uh, but it does lead to one of my favourite scenes, which reminds me of uh, Gilgamesh in the Fate series of animes, where all of the allies arrive and Cap gets to say Avengers Assemble. However, before that, we have dual-wielding Thor, which is badass, and we get Captain America holding the hammer. I'm going to do a video on that separately, potentially, but there is a reason for it that goes back to Thor 1, which, great, just very good. Um, so Mjolnir's back, yeah. you know, with Cap, but, you know, we're not going to see it anymore. So, that happens. Um, I love Hobo Thor. It makes sense. He was so powerful at the end of Infinity War that five years later, he's gotten, like, fat and beer belly and can barely fight. Uh, in comparison to how we could, because otherwise he would have just wiped the floor with the none in no Infinity Stones Thanos. So we have that. Um, it was an excellent way to do it. However, um, I think that it was played for laughs a bit much. And the end battle, especially the scene where all of like the main female cast like just poof, get together and girl power to save Spider-Man. It was a great scene. Like. I, for one, think that it was a bit gratuitous in the fact that it was like, yes, the women are doing something. I feel as though they, like, kind of shoved it in your face a bit. But I know that I don't mind that much, to be honest. Yes, it may have been very much in your face. You could not miss it if you tried. Well, I mean, if you tried, you probably could, but <laughs> enough about that. It It's nice to, to know that they're like, yes, we do have these characters, and they do useful things, because the main characters in this were not the female ones. It was Cap, and it was Tony. They were the main characters. And then the other characters that did crazy useful stuff, we had uh, Ant-Man and the Hulk, who sort of built the time machine -y things, but they needed Tony for that as well. Cap went back in time at the end to fix reality. Um, then, other than that, we had Captain Marvel, who did super useful thing of destroying the, uh, spaceship at the end, but, you know, she could have just beaten Thanos, really, couldn't she? Yeah, yeah, she could. Oh, well, um, plot holes again, it's fine, but yeah, um, I think it was a great film. The plot holes really annoy me, it's just the sort of person I am, and that's why I personally would give it a 7, like a solid 7, or a very low 8. 
out of 10. However, look, trying to look at it more objectively from an entertainment standpoint, I would give it closer to a 9 out of 10. I know some people say it's the best film they've ever seen. Um, and I can get it, there was like years of build-up, many films leading up to it that weren't necessarily films that you need to see for it to make sense, uh, but they definitely help, um, and lead up to the big climax that this is of this set of Avengers films. There may be new Avengers films later, but this set, it's done. Um, and personally, I think that the whole deal with, well, the whole deal with this film is the culmination of many stories, and particularly Iron Man's. It started with Iron Man. Iron Man 1. It kicked off this whole thing. And now Iron Man's died, and had a family, and it was really sad. And the family parts were some of my favourite parts. It shew the human side of the heroes, rather than the heroic side, which is something we don't get to see very often, and I'm glad that we've seen it. But, as my reviews go, you know that I can't give a score out of 10, I have to give a score out of 6. So, for Avengers Endgame, I would give it a 5 out of 6 Pokeballs. 5.4 specifically, but I don't like doing like partial Pokeballs, but that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments, um, if you agree that the plot holes are a big problem, but it's still enjoyable, then like and share. If you think they're a problem and it's not enjoyable, then let me know how many plot holes have you found and what they are, because I'm very interested, I love plot holes, and I try and fill them as much as I can. Um, makes it more enjoyable for me. And finally, subscribe. I don't do very much actual content like this, but if you're interested in my day-to-day -day life, I try to put up a vlog every day talking about it, so regardless, I'll catch you cats on the flip-flop. Goodbye.